The first practical nonlinear edit system started showing up around 1992 with the introduction of the Avid. Ran on a Macintosh platform and was pretty user friendly compared to some of the contenders out there. Nonlinear refers to the ability to cut and paste picture and sound much the same way that a word processor can cut and paste text. And somewhere along the way, somebody I knew gave me the chance to do a project on an Avid and it completely changed my life. Now's the time to get a great price on a home and a great price on a loan from Countrywide. They're I knew how to cut, but I wasn't much of a Mac person. I got the guy who managed the system to sit in the room and tell me how to do something I needed to do when I needed to do it. I took to it easily and embraced it totally. 800-877-LOAN. I like it. Countrywide. Affordable loans, guaranteed rates. Whoa! Thank you very much. It's very kind. While cutting the countrywide spots, I edited this short film on the side. I was really starting to get the hang of the Avid. I was in the right place at the right time when my grandmother passed away and left me a little over $100,000. And simultaneously, Jim Wilson and Kevin Costner were executive producing a historical piece called 500 Nations and needed two Avids for about a year. I took my grandmother's money and their upfront money, gave it to Avid, and bought those two machines and the gear that goes with them and didn't see them for a year. But I was always sort of a gambler being a skydiver, so. I think it was worth the chance. After its Broadway opening, Neil Simon's Lost in Yonkers received universal critical acclaim. Along with the Pulitzer Prize came a Tony Award for Best Play, as well as Tonys for Leading Ladies Mercedes Rule and Irene Worth. Marker. You sit here all night till you eat the soup. I tried. I can't get it down. You yeah, eat it up quick. You won't taste it. I would taste this if I didn't have a tongue. You don't want a tongue? I can arrange that too. The guys I did single white female for hired me to do this making of, and they let me cut it on an Avid and then online at Match Frame. My girlfriend at the time was the DJ trainee on the film. She's the blonde in the white pants there. I love the Avid's ability to help me organize and manage all the available footage. It freed me to focus more on the cut. During post-production, new hands begin to leave their imprint on Neil Simon's Lost in Yonkers, including those of editor Steve Cohen and Academy Award-winning composer Elmer Bernstein. So tell me now, why do you want to live with grandma? Why don't you tell Grandma, Jakob? Because when Pop said we had the opportunity to live here with you, our only living grandmother, and our only living Aunt Bella. The first time I see the movie in continuity is always uh, kind of a shocking experience. <laughs> first of all, because the editor is working along cutting while I'm shooting. I may have seen certain scenes, and in this case I had, but it's always a shock because it isn't the way I imagined it. It's the way the editor cut it. Oh, I also think that. No. Too many pauses. That's all. So let's let's uh, let's take those Thank out and see. look and see what it looks like in the wide shot. Now editing really begins. And are we living at Bell? As it builds, 
the characters come together and come alive and you and the movie starts to work and that that's very exciting now that our country's at war with Jer japan what we should do is stay on him i find the editing process to be very musical in the sense that there's a technical process that you go through to achieve the artistry of the beauty of music and that in fact all of those elements are in editing pacing rhythm tone scale it is a very musical process you can feel a scene it doesn't feel right it's rushed or it's slow and we work very hard to get the pacing correct and keep it interesting well I thought the family should sort of stick together now that our country's at war with Ger Japan and that uh Oh, I also think that, no, that's all. And this is the smart one? I thought it's good. Long before Europeans set out to navigate the globe, groups of Polynesian explorers were sailing their open outriggers across the Pacific in search of new lands. While finishing Yonkers at Match Frame, I ran into Ed Gorsuch, with whom I'd done the Dances with Wolves videos, and he directed a documentary and a film produced by Jim and Kevin. I got the job, and we cut on an avid at Match Frame after they finally jumped in and bought one. In the span of a thousand years, they would develop one of the most advanced civilizations in all of Polynesia on 65 square miles of tropical paradise named Rapa Nui. With the arrival of Dutch explorer Jakob Rogeveen on Easter Sunday, 1722, there were no more than a handful of survivors living in caves on an arid, barren rock he renamed Easter Island. The only sign of the civilization that had once flourished there were hundreds of immense stone carvings littering the landscape, which the natives called Moai. These solemn-faced statues now stood abandoned in the quarry or toppled from altars, their necks broken and bearing the scars of both great social upheaval and natural disaster. For years to come, the tragic events that occurred here would be left to the imagination of the world. I directed, shot Super 8, and edited this video for Jim Wilson's secretary, Maria Machado. The video and the song was a hit for her in Portugal. In 1994, Matchframe introduced me to two partners from the Wrightwood Group. They'd gotten a series deal on the Disney Channel to do Walt Disney World Inside Out. They hooked me up with J.T. Taylor, a great producer I'd met on preview, and did that bike polo piece together, among many others, and we wound up doing the whole first season together. This deal with Wrightwood would turn out to be a beautiful and lucrative friendship, and would really pay off those two avids I'd bought. I'm Scott Harriet, host, master meteorologist, and the guy who's come out of the cold to show you that things here aren't just Warm and sunny, they're almost too hot to believe.
That's right, Scott. And one of the hottest new attractions is also one of the scariest you'll ever encounter. Today, a sneak preview of the terrifying alien encounter at the new Tomorrowland. And you want hot? How about a song from the sizzling hot rap group Tag Team at the Magic Kingdom? It's us and the mouse rocking the house. Yes, today we're jumping into warm and sunny fun here at Walt Disney World. Mm. Inside out. This show was as fun to do as it appears. Almost irreverent in its look at the attractions and rides and places to stay across Walt Disney World, Epcot, and MGM Studios. We cut it on a tried and true match frame linear system, which did have the advantage again of being online quality from beginning to end. Fear not, people of the future. We are simply visitors from your past. We are friendly, hi. And we come looking for scary attractions. We do. Well, here we are at the terrifying new alien encounter where they're going to be transporting a live alien creature right into the same room with us. Try to contain your enthusiasm. Are you guys scared? No. There's no reason. It's the future. It's science. Let's go. Come on. We've all had our shots. All right, everybody. Here comes Mr. Alien. gonna tell you what happened but you don't want to miss it because it's not gonna miss you anybody seen my shoe well Scott there sure is a lot to see at the new Tomorrowland but let's explore some of the wild water fun with a little sight skiing it's starting <laughs> It's one of the hottest things about being here at Walt Disney World this time of year. All right, guys, let it rip whenever you're ready. No snow, no hail, not even an iceberg anywhere near by. Just lots and lots of skiing. But again, swimming is nice, too. We're heading over to the Magic Kingdom for a special performance by celebrity guest Tag Team. We're kicking the flow and we're gonna do it something like this. Donald Duck back again. Hello, I'm Gordon Elliott, and unfortunately, I'm on the road a lot, which means I don't get enough time to spend with my best friend in the whole world, Speedy. And that's why I'm going to spend some quality time today. And look, here comes Speedy now. Hello, little Speedy. He wants to play the towel game. He always wins this one. Come on. <laughs> and in the next hour, stay around because we're going to cavort with the canines. We're going to look at some amazing new Pooch products and we're going to make some really high-class pictures. Uh, you know what I mean. Hey, <laughs> come on. Come on, Speedy. dog lover. If I could uh, have a whole kennel, I would. I have four really rambunctious uh, animals. Two chihuahuas. This is Pumpkin and this is Binky. And I have two pugs, Puggy Sue and Little Ricky. I grew up with chihuahuas and pugs and cocker spaniels. I'm always going to different pet stores and looking at the dogs. You know, I feel like they're my kids in a way. The older pug named Ricky was very protective of me. And this little one follows me wherever I go, so she's kind of attached to me. She's now like a total car dog. I take her everywhere, and I put her, I have a little purse that I carry her in. She went to the dentist with me, sat on my lap while I was getting drilled. I smuggled her into the movie theater. She watched a movie. I'd love to have a basset hound. I just like, I have this thing about, and bulldogs, the uglier the face, the, the more beautiful I think they are. Because it's just they have the most amazing faces. I love big ones, too. I, um, I really do. Actually, I'm looking for a big dog right now. <laughs> I really love big dogs. That's the only thing that's missing right now. <laughs> 